Today, most rockets use tanks to store their propellant as they climb. And the weight of the tanks is usually many times greater than the weight of the useful payload. This reduces the efficiency of the launch vehicle and also contributes to the problem of space debris. Engineers from the University of Glasgow and Dnipro National University in Ukraine claimed in a paper published in the Journal of Spacecraft and Rockets that they have built, fired, and for the first time throttled up and down an autophage engine, which could solve this issue. This video discusses the working principle and experimental results of the autophage engine. Watch till the end to know more about this revolutionary new technology, and do not forget to subscribe to the channel for future updates. The autophage rocket's main structure is a cylindrical propellant rod, consisting of solid strong plastic fuel on the outside, with a core of powdered oxidizer. As the rod is pushed into the hot engine, it gets vaporized, producing thrust via exhaust gases, as well as more heat to burn the next bit of the propellant rod. So the rocket gets shorter as it eats itself from the bottom up. This would mean that the rocket structure would be consumed as fuel and can solve problems of excessive structural mass. So by the end of the flight, only the payload and the empty engine enter space. It would also be cheaper than existing rockets. And because the design can be scaled down for smaller payloads, it would be ideal for lifting small satellites like CubeSats. Liquid-fueled engines can be throttled and even restarted by pumping fuel and oxidizer into the combustion chamber as desired, but their turbo pump feed systems, injection heads, cooling channels, and slosh preventers make them expensive. Solid motors, on the other hand, can produce a desired impulse profile by shaping the propellant such that the flame front progresses in a predetermined pattern, but it is not generally possible to throttle the motor on demand. An autophage engine combines the comparative simplicity and handling of the solid motor with the throttle ability of the liquid engine. Propellant rods are constructed with a polypropylene fuel cylinder, enclosing an ammonium perchlorate and ammonium nitrate oxidizer. Propellant rod is fed into a conical vaporizer using an external ram, powered by an inert gas. By sending that rod into the blazing hot engine, running at temperatures ranging around 3200 degrees centigrade, the fuel and oxidizer are obliterated and turned into gases. A system of channels on the outer surface of the vaporizer cone transport these gases separately to an injector ring, where they enter the combustion chamber through 16 circumferential ports. Combustion then takes place and the exhaust gases exit through the nozzle, which is a sliding graphite throat that can be positioned via a push rod to vary the throat area without stopping the engine. The injection ports are covered by tantalum flap valves, which prevent the back passage of the products of combustion. The engine incorporates an additional gas manifold, which can provide propane and oxygen from external storage tanks. These pilot gases can be ignited by a spark plug and are used to preheat the engine until the vaporization and combustion of the solid propellant have become self-sustaining. According to the researchers, in the future the propellant feeding ram will be replaced by a self-contained mechanism, and the preheat function will be achieved by an electrical element rather than external pilot gases. Many solid fuel motors don't have the capability of being throttled. But with the autophage engine, you can increase the speed at which you're feeding the propellant rod in, if you want more thrust. The experiments were conducted in the laboratories of the Dnipro National University, using some instrumentation provided by the University of Glasgow. The team conducted two consecutive test fires during 2018. The tests focused on the force applied to the solid propellant, the resultant propellant rod usage, the chamber pressure, and the stagnation temperature near the chamber wall. The team was able to sustain the engine operations for around 60 seconds. With propellant feed forces between 250 to 900 newtons, they have achieved propellant feed rates between 100 to 300 millimeters per minute. The chamber pressures range between approximately 300 to 700 kilopascals. Earlier this month, the UK Ministry of Defence has pledged about $117,000 for the continued development of the autophage rocket engine. The funding will be used to create a hybrid autophage engine, with a tube of solid fuel containing a liquid oxidizer. This hybrid system will provide more energy than a purely solid fuel engine. If all goes according to plan, the hybrid engine will be test-fired next year at Kingston University in London. So, what do you think will be the future of the autophage engine? Let us know in the comments. 
And do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more updates on rocket science. And as always, thanks for watching.